Bioenergetics is the study of energy in living organisms, which is metabolism in some where you are familiar with the building up and the breaking down and the, the energetic expense or the molecules that um, have to get broken apart to pay for that work, if you will. So my focus in metabolism, um, which more and more, uh, I guess to define that a little deeper is I study metabolic health. Uh, and I define that based on the efficacy of the hormone insulin. And someone may think that's a strange step to take. How do we go from metabolic health to the hormone insulin? Uh, it's because insulin is the it, it is the the, the gatekeeper um, to all uh, reactions that I care about as a scientist who studies muscle and neurons and fat cells. That's the the primary tissues of interest for my lab. Insulin has a thematic effect throughout the body, which is to uh, it tells cells of the body what to do with the energy that it has, um, and. In that role, it has a powerful influence, potentially influencing whole body metabolic rate, for example, getting back to bioenergetics and measuring metabolic rate. So my focus as a metabolic scientist is really studying the effects of insulin and the consequences of having too much insulin to be really precise. Yeah, my research um, with the big theme being uh, better understanding insulin and the pathogenicity of living a life where insulin levels are too high too often, um, an average day will be a mix insofar as I am, yes, both research scientist and professor, I will have a mix of teaching a class. Um, and this semester, it just happens to be my teaching assignment is a class called pathophysiology. So any, any, uh, you know, pathophysiology is a course that nurse, nursing students will take, and a lot of pre-med students take it. Um, just if you'll allow me a brief aside, um, it's been a very gratifying class to teach because it has helped hone my and, and perfect my view of the relevance of insulin resistance in uh, chronic diseases of virtually every tissue whether we're talking about heart problems or, or, or liver problems or brain problems or reproductive problems, it's been a fun exercise for me over the years as being a teaching professor to just as an act of, of personal curiosity, look to determine the influence of insulin resistance in those and more problems. But then other than the classroom, of course, I have a considerable interest in what goes on in my laboratory here on campus, where we have uh, multiple projects um, going on. For example, today we have a lab meeting um, to discuss a uric acid project that we're doing with Dr. Rick Johnson at Colorado. Um, and just to shed a brief moment of light on that, it's we're, we're trying to determine the degree to which ketones are sufficient to offset the inflammation that is turned on in response to uric acid. So what happens if uric acid levels are up, but also ketone levels are up within a body? Uh, so that, that's one of a handful of experimental um, designs and projects that we have working on. And, and just so that the audience appreciates why I would even devote my career to this, insulin resistance affects up to 88% of all adults within the United States based on recent data. This is the most common health problem. And if, it, uh, if that were all, and it was a health problem that was benign, then who would care? But the fact that it is not only the most common health problem, but also contributes to every non-communicable chronic disease, it means it's also not only is it very prevalent, but also very relevant. So how does it start? Firstly, let me just provide my own very brief definition of what insulin resistance is. And I, I will invoke this the, a metaphor of, of a coin that imagine this coin that I'm holding is insulin resistance. On one side of the coin is the phenomenon that you just described, which is insulin isn't working as well as it used to. Um, at some cells, I will add that as a provision here. So some of the cells of the body, indeed big ones and dominant ones like muscle cells and fat cells, aren't responding to insulin as well as they used to. Now, however, some cells are responding well to insulin, and that becomes a problem when we flip the coin over because the other side of the coin that we call insulin resistance is an obligatory hyperinsulinemia or chronically elevated insulin. And that's a good place to start um, because of the handful of causes of insulin resistance, I firmly believe that chronically elevated insulin is the most relevant of the causes. In other words, if a person is living a lifestyle which is chronically keeping their insulin at an elevated state, 
they become they become progressively more and more resistant to that insulin at least some of the cells of the body do and this then is the insulin resistance in that coin metaphor so uh chronically elevated insulin is a key cause now of course um as the body becomes more resistant to insulin it needs more insulin in order to get the same signal that once upon a time was realized with a more modest amount of insulin. And thus, we start to see this very vicious cycle where, yes, on one hand, too much insulin is driving insulin resistance, but a failure of the body to respond to the insulin is in turn promoting a greater need for insulin. And so we end up with this scenario in which hyperinsulinemia is both cause and consequence of insulin resistance.